Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So uh, before I talk about what we're gonna be doing today as this little time lapse is gonna be going, I wanted to let you guys know that I do have a Discord server up and running now. Um, some people have already joined as they're from my Twitch chat and basically I let them have first access as I wanted to do kind of like a trial run and so far looking okay so feel free to join it I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to join just please make sure to read the rules I won't be as active in it as like discord servers I don't usually thrive in but I did want to make um, a place for you guys to chat and as well as share art um, and share tips and stuff if you guys would like to I'll pop in and out every so often most likely just to like and see your guys's art and stuff but I probably won't be chatting too much uh, so please do not DM me on there I would highly appreciate it but if you want to at me for anything like if you wanted to show me something you feel free to do that I'll get to the messages as soon as I can um, but for today's video um, also not really planned so I wanted to do a sketching session just as like a warm-up for myself but I ended up recording it and I decided that I wanted to draw my OCs with Pokemon partners or Pokemon uh, companions basically so I was kind of thinking of what kind of trainer types each of my OCs would be kind of like meaning if that makes sense like if they had a specific type of Pokemon that they had so in order I'm going to be drawing Maseki first then Sato and then Akemi and then Koji so that is the order I'm going to draw them in as well as I'm going to scrap these sketches pretty much right away because um, I was going to do a cute like sitting pose for everybody and I was going to draw maybe multiple Pokemon for each of them because I think I had at least two planned for each I, can't, I don't actually don't think I had two for Koji planned but I had two ish planned but in the end I'm going to draw them all kind of like standing across in a row and I'm only going to draw them with one Pokemon with the exception of Akemi and I'll get to, to that a little bit later. So I'm going to start off with Maseki. So I'm just roughing in the like the body and I accidentally didn't hit record so a lot of Maseki's um, sketching got lost. But here I have Maseki holding I believe it's Swadloon and the reason being is that I was like running through a bunch of different... Actually let me go through all this first. I have Maseki with Swadloon. And then I have my OC Sato with the Alolan Sand Slash. So Maseki with Swadloon is mostly because when I was running through like the different grass types that I think Maseki would have, because I think he would be like a Pokemon breeder, but like he would focus on like cultivating and growing berries and stuff probably. <laughs> um, but also like, probably taking care of the Pokemon and stuff, because I think he'd be good with taking care of like baby Pokemon, younger Pokemon, smaller Pokemon, any kind of Pokemon kind of thing. So I thought Swadloon would fit because I was reading its like description because I haven't read like some of the description of these Pokemon in like a long time and it said like I think it can like it can identify places with like lush area of forest or places that can grow um plants I don't know what exactly the wording was but it also eats like the dead leaves which contributes to why the soil and stuff and like the plants can thrive in that area so I thought it'd be a very helpful Pokemon for uh Masaki I'm also drawing Akemi with a Woobat and a Reunicolus. I don't know how to say this Pokemon's name. I believe growing up, me and my brother have always called it Reunicolus, but I don't know if there's actually a way to pronounce it. Um, so yeah, apologies if I keep butchering its name. The reason why I gave Akemi two Pokemon, uh, minus the fact that uh, like I was going to draw everyone with more than one is that Rio Nicholas is actually one of my favorite Pokemon so I kind of have him look like he's kind of bothering Akemi so maybe if I was in this lineup he's actually my Pokemon so maybe that's why he looks like he's trying to bother Akemi um, and then last but not least I have Koji and I have Koji with the little Scraggy so I'll get to that a little bit later so uh, I thought Masaki would fit like a grass type trainer obviously um, but I didn't mind that Swadloon was also part bug, so it kind of still fits. I also planned in the past, actually, because I've drawn Masiki with Pokemon before. I'll leave it up here, like around here. Um, and I've done like several sketches in my sketchbook too. So I've drawn him with like Grookey, uh, I believe Buddu. Um, there's some like other Pokemon. I love the idea of Low Ted too, so you could help water plants and just like, I love drawing Masiki with like such smaller, cute Pokemon, because I feel like he's the type to take care of like, these kind of baby Pokemon or these smaller Pokemon um, just because he's the type to also take care and kind of like mentor Koji which is the one I'm drawing right now and then Sato 
who is on my only female in this lineup, uh, because she's more of like headstrong, but also I feel like she's very much like to the point, likes to get stuff done, a little bit more blunt. I kind of thought maybe she'd be a little bit more like ice type trainer or steel type and luckily Alolan Sand Slash kind of fits both of those areas so that is why I was gonna draw her maybe with Frost Slash but I'm not too sure like I didn't want her to come off as like scary per se if you, you know what I mean so mm. so okay let me talk about this a little bit so my first intention of wanting to do even like these sketches and stuff I wanted to play around in Clip Studio Paint a little bit more and just actually sit down and do some line work so I kind of reverted back doing line art the way how I used to do it. So very thick lines, kind of like tapering, but also, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's more simple, a little bit more bold rather than like some other ones I've done in the past, especially like I think the Genshin Masaki one that I did. Um, I did a little bit of thinner line work and I did a lot more detail in the clothing. So like I would include like the seams and try to make sure like the thickness of the clothing was kind of there. But for this, I kind of left it very like more like shapes. I didn't really kind of think about like the thickness or rubber, like whether or not it looked more realistic looking. Uh, so yeah, I tried my best to vary up the line work. If I remember, I'll make sure to put all the brushes that I used for today in the description. I believe for sketching, I used the right Bodu pen as usual. And then for coloring, I used the soft paint um, brush that I had gotten from the asset store. And then this one, I do not remember the name, but it's some kind of like inking pen, like it's meant for inking. So I wanted to give it, go like give it a go. And I think at some point you would have saw me fiddling with Gaumon's, um pressure sensitivity. So in previous videos, I actually set the pre like pressure sensitivity, I believe, to... Is it? It's not set in the middle, but like after resetting a couple of times because I had to do some other reviews for other tablets and the drivers are not compatible, um, it reset it to zero and I actually really like zero a lot, especially for painting and stuff and just sketching. It just feels na like more natural. But when using this brush, it was harder for me to get like thick and thin lines uh, more seamlessly and easily so I needed to push back no push up the pressure sensitivity so that I didn't have to press as hard to get my darker lines which is kind of nice um, hmm. I think that's about it in terms of line work so I d decided to kind of shift the view for you guys so you guys can see the side portion so my hand isn't blocking the entirety of the screen or the place I'm working at so you guys can see how I usually do line work uh, for the laces, I did do two different methods. Sometimes I block them in and then erase where I want the laces. And then on the other shoe, I actually just place the laces one by one um, without needing to block it in, I guess. Okay, so we talked about Masaki. I talked about Sato. Next is Akami. So Akami, he, for me, it's like he's more reserved. And I kind of think he's like, he's a little bit more shy, but also I still think... I don't know, what was I, let me think. I'm kind of backtracking because I did the research for what kind of Pokemon I wanted them to have a couple of days ago, so I don't really remember. But I thought Woobat might be a cute idea just because maybe it's more affectionate than Akemi is. And then I feel like uh, even with Sato, he's not that affectionate. Like he's very shy, I guess, if that makes sense. And Sato is a little bit more upfront, a little bit more blunt, that kind of person. So. I thought it would be a good contrast, and I feel like Akemi would be a psychic type trainer, potentially, which is why I gave him Rio Nicholas as well. Um, just because, like, it kind of fits, but also, like, I think I was struggling too much with trying to think of what kind of trainer he would be, because I could see him maybe even as just, like, a steel type trainer, a normal type trainer, anything of that sort, I guess potentially could fit. Like I said, I was going to make Sato either steel or ice type, so... Hmm. I just think she's like more of a headstrong type person, so and not only that, I think Sand Slash in general, like Sand Slash and Sanshi are both very cute. So why not give her Sand Slash? Because I think like aesthetically kind of fits uh her color palette, but also like type-wise, I think it fits perfectly. And then why pick Scraggy for Koji? So I think Koji's a little bit more mischievous, but he's still like, you know, kind of good-hearted and he's kind of like he's still a kid. And I kind of fit 
like I kind of feel like well I'm stuttering a lot today I kind of feel like it kind of fits his aesthetic and kind of his demeanor now I was also thinking like Tyrog could also fit his character or even Pancham and I think you guys can tell I was trying to pick more like fighting type Pokemon I believe is Greggy a fighting type I actually didn't check this up I just like assigned it to him without thinking oh by the way while I'm searching this up I, I don't draw Pokemon that often. Like I said, I wanted to draw Pokemon more so that I could get used to drawing like non-human characters without jumping into drawing like animals because I know I struggle with that. Uh, but mm, yeah, I, I can't multitask. Scraggy is a dark fighting type. Okay, perfect. Uh, it kind of fits. So yes, um, for the poses, I also have them, like all of them standing in a line, but I have Koji crouching just because I extended the canvas twice to fit all my OCs going across. But if I made Koji standing, I would have to extend it again. So I decided to make him crouching. Um, and then he's kind of more on level with where Scraggy is. Now, thinking about it right now, I don't like I don't know if I drew the sizes correctly. So even like right here, I tried to enlarge in a little bit of Rio Nicholas to be, I think more appropriately at the size. I'm not too sure. Woobat might be too big. Sandslash might be too small. Swadloon might be too big. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, so I just kind of like estimated the, the sizes and the heights and stuff. Cause even for my OCs, I think if Sato were to stand straight up, from how I drew her, I think she might even be taller than Maseki, which I canon, like my head canon for them is Sato is shorter than Maseki, and I'm still debating whether or not I want Akemi to be taller than Maseki or Maseki to be the tallest out of my OCs, because I think Maseki stands at 178 centimeters, so he's not like uber tall or anything. He's just kind of, he's there. <laughs> but I'm not sure if I want Akemi to be more, uh, a little bit more scrawny and lankier kind of taller and thinner, like a beanpole kind of thing. Cause I think Masaki has more of a, almost like a ruler bot, not a ruler body, mm, a little bit maybe. He's not, he's not too wide, but he's not like thin either. He's just kind of like standard, but I want Akemi to be probably on the thinner side. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting like sidetracked. Um, I think for the most part, so if I take in consideration the total time of filming, it said it was close to five hours. Now I did miss a portion of Masaki's sketching session. So let's say it's close to six hours even, uh, cause I did include like the other portion of the sketching session. So maybe six hours in total, but the coloring part took me, I think, Let's see, I think Masaki and Sato, I think maybe took half an hour each. And then I think Koji and Akemi only took like around 16 minutes. So it took about two hours to do the coloring. And surprisingly, actually not really surprisingly, <laughs> line work took me the longest. Cause if you guys know, I don't like doing line art that much. I think, or how am I supposed to put this? It's not that I dislike line work or line art. I do like it and I see the benefit of it. And sometimes I really do miss um, working with line work, but knowing myself on how I like to color and how I like to correct my mistakes and stuff, it's easier for me to correct like immediately rather than, oh, you have to go and erase like what your mistake was. Like, let's say, or not what your mistake was. Let's say you have to erase the coloring first because you laid that down because you know the mistake. Let's say I drew Koji's hand wrong and I already colored it. So I would have to get rid of the color. I would have to get rid of the shading. I have to get rid of the line work. And then maybe I have to sketch on top to rebuild that hand. But whenever I'm like painting, I feel more freedom to just like erase it completely and then paint in a hand or just paint on top. Now I know there is the option to paint on top as well, if, even if you do line work. And I do do that sometimes, especially if I'm fixing up like minor mistakes and things so that I can kind of just correct it um, at the very end. But for me, it's just like, sometimes I can't get it to match uh, the same vibe of it, if that makes sense. Cause if you see today's coloring session, I'm actually gonna do it super simple. I'm not gonna do anything painterly. Um, I'm gonna leave it quite, like, pretty much like gradients and cell shading. Uh, just because I think it fits the, like, this kind of fun, bolder line work. Um, and, like, I think it's also because, like, I didn't want to fully render for 
people in a row by doing like all painterly and i think if i had that plan i wouldn't have done line work because like i said time wise line work actually took me the longest um but yeah and i always have to check the correct mistakes and stuff and i didn't notice this until someone mentioned it in my masaki genshin video is that i had my like a second viewfinder open with the line work flipped now i only do this in clip studio paint which this is why i'm saying like it's more of a recent thing so whenever i work in paint to a sigh uh i never done that before but i do think it's helpful to make sure that things don't look too wonky because that's another thing like why i don't like doing line work so because like sometimes i don't correct things in my sketch and then when i line it um, I line it as is and then I kind of like hyper focus and don't realize to take a step back and be like hey like you know the hands kind of weird the eyes are off kind of thing but having like the flip version kind of makes you see like a different a different view as well as you can kind of see whether or not things look a little bit more symmetrical like I noticed that Masaki's face looked a little weird with his head like cocked to the side um, or tilted to the left but I decided to leave it because at least I corrected the eyes to be somewhat aligned. Um, I just don't like how his head looks like that because he kind of he's kind of giving me a little bit more of like not like creepy vibes, too intense maybe of looking. But yeah, um, for coloring, I try to keep like I try to keep. How do I say this? I was trying to keep everything to a minimum still. So if I could, I was locking, like alpha locking the layers so that I could just paint, or not paint, do the colors directly on top of one another. The only things that I did separate, so I separate skin, um, the clothing and hair. So that's already separating them into three. I did eyes and any like facial portions on the skin layer. So that's like everything together. And then for hair, I pretty much did it all in one layer. I think with the exception, I think Sato had maybe one or two layers more, and I think Koji might have too. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I can work with one layer um, for the coloring. And then for even like Alolan Sand Slash, I had to use like the multiply layer because I was like too lazy to actually manually pick colors to do the shadows and the highlights. So I and like I added an overlay. So I was kind of like, use as many layers as you need. But for me, uh, I was trying to keep my layers still to a minimum. I think I used 50-ish layers for everything. So hmm, I don't think it's too bad. I remember drawing 17 in the past and I've used over 200 layers before and that would drive me insane. Um, but yeah, I kind of did the painting, or not the painting, the coloring a little bit differently. So I basically selected the outside of the line work. I inverted it, painted it kind of to a medium toned gray color, and then after that I decided to layer clip each of the character's folders to the gray area so I don't color outside of my line work. It just made things a little bit easier and I didn't mind if it's a little bit messy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video though. Um, I know the probably the coloring is going like mega fast, but I wanted to focus to actually be mostly on the sketching and the line work today as that was what I was kind of more or less experimenting. The way I'm coloring right now is kind of like akin to how I used to work whenever I did my 17 chibi work. So yeah, I don't think I have very much things like, wow, my brain is super scattered. Right now it's 1am. Um, so yeah, mm, hopefully you guys don't mind this kind of a video. I had a lot of fun um, and it was more relaxing for me to record it this way. I had half the mind to actually record it with like the screen recording but I decided not to because I find it funny that some of you guys said that if I do the screen recording with in real time talking or even like talking afterwards some people said it's like akin to how I do live streaming which I know not many people probably prefer but yeah it's still fun to record a screen this way so you guys can see my hand moving while I work and at the very end I'll put the full rendered image so that you guys can see the colors more accurately because my webcam does not pick up screens very well um, and I think that's about it. Um, I'm probably not gonna even gonna go to sleep right now. I'm just gonna render this video and I'm going to finish uh, sewing a plush because that is my, my next goal for now. I, I keep picking up new hobbies or things I want to learn and the next thing I want to learn is how to sew better. So mm. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!